But yeah, I had the, had the match with Felipe. The mistake that pisses me off the most about the match is that I let him turtle for three seconds and didn't really do anything to attack his turtle. They're like, he's gonna get pumped, he's gonna lose the first round. Suck me off. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. So ADCC 2024 is done and dusted. Here's what I took away from the event. We're back. I've been back for four days. It feels like it's been a week or longer. Jet lag on the way back is just atrocious. Getting tired as if it was 3 a.m. at 7 p.m. is just nasty. Um, but back into training, back into the rhythm of things. Obviously, this is going to be a big skill building phase for probably until the next match, which will be November 23rd. Might do a comp in between, might not. I haven't even looked at the schedule. It's just been pretty hectic. Uh, and then post that, probably another skill building phase for like the next six months again, based off lessons of what we did well in ADCC uh, and what we didn't do well in ADCC. And that's obviously not just contingent upon my matches, that's across the board. So we had Jeremy compete against Wagner, showed a lot of grit, showed a lot of determination. Um, I trained with Wagner a week after and the guy is very tough, very strong. And I imagine if I didn't have a 50 kilo weight discrepancy, the round would have gone really badly. Um, so Jeremy didn't have that. And so he still did well, still broke him, um, he told me afterwards that his knee, he thinks his knee was popped in the Jeremy match, but he's unsure as to whether it was that specific match or the match afterwards. But that the night between day one and day two, he was not feeling good about the day two. Uh, and then had some BPC and some other stuff and then felt entirely better um, all the way up until the finals. To, to watch those guys get into the finals, like uh, this has been the big narrative of this ADCC is obviously um, Kynan's performance going seven for eight, tying Marcelo and the old dudes, like uh, um, Wagner, Cyborg, Lovato. Crazy. Like 40, minimum 40 years of age, could be doing masters competitions and riding off into the sunset on otherwise very successful careers and still killing it. It's fucking impressive. I've gained a lot of respect for just watching those guys out there. Very impressive. I, I already had a lot of respect for them beforehand. I've met each of them individually a handful of times now and they're always very respectful, very lovely individuals. Wagner opened up his gym to me free of charge, allowed me to go train and learn from him and, and go do some stuff over there, which was great. His whole family is super lovely people. So the, the, the son, the daughter, uh, the, the partner, and then everybody involved in their gym, they have a really good culture there, which is great. Cyborg is the same. I didn't unfortunately get to train with him because of just competing time schedules, but he said, if you ever need anything, if you're ever near Miami, just let me know. Um, we'll look after you. And then Lovato. Lovato's just a f***ing G. Really lovely guy. Obviously a legend in both MMA and Jiu Jitsu. See you then. Um, it's just really cool to see those guys doing well. Um, so yeah, Jeremy obviously had a tough match with Wagner on the first day. Ethan had a touch ma tough match with Ethan. Um, it's kind of the perfect matchup for both of those guys because they have very similar styles. They're both very good at scrambling. They're both very good on the back. Both very good at front headlock attacks. Um, Ethan Krellenstein just got the one up uh, by getting towards Ethan's back where he was probably a little bit too comfortable in a wizard, wizard battle, like a dogfight battle because he's just so good there. He's so hard to do shit to there. Yeah. And um, he doesn't really care about his where his hips end up because he's so dexterous. Isaac is technically kind of maybe even in some small world part of our team when he wants to be um, and he had a tough match against Negramonte. Negramonte came in well prepared uh, he had obviously done a lot of training with Isaac in Bondi and so they know each other's games it's always difficult to have a match with somebody that you know their game quite intimately because you know what their tells are um, and even if you're really really good uh, your patterns are going to be exposed just by sheer frequency and he was unlucky to get caught right at the very end with a knee bar after dominating, dominating, dominating a majority of the wrestling exchanges. He was doing something really cool. I obviously gather he picked up from Penn State where he was like shuffle stepping. He wasn't walking his feet. He was like kind of galloping forwards. Um, haven't played around with that, but I think that that's, there's something to that. Um, but it's interesting. I can see how it limits contact time off the floor and so you can't get snapped down easily. So I'm willing to put it into practice how useful it is for jiu-jitsu because you don't get the right reads and right reactions anyway and people are just willing to back up who knows but we'll have to see um and then obviously i was the only one who went to day two i can hold that over all of my teammates for the next two years and i definitely will they'll hold over the they'll hold over me the fact that i didn't get a medal which is fair because equal opposite reactions whatever um 
but yeah, had the, had the match with Felipe. Uh, we we're talking about it just before. There's obviously the discrepancy with um, stalling tools being the only thing that really uh, decided the match without any of the jiu-jitsu component because he's hard to score on. I, I don't remember the last time. I do remember the last time Felipe was scored on. It was Nicky Rod. Nicky Rod passed him with a body lock um, in his match in 2022 to beat him to get into the finals to face Gordon. And I watched that match the night before, knowing that I'd have a rematch with Philippe. And I was looking for ways that he'd been passed. Isaac told me he passed him in training, but I don't pass the same as Isaac. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have to develop a strategy that's going to uh, be more closely suited to my attributes and <coughs> my skills. And so I went with a body lock. I got extremely close on two occasions to passing him, um, but took the, took the pedal off the, uh, took the, foot off the gas a little bit because I knew that it wasn't the points period so it wouldn't have exactly counted for much you can pass him but his escapes are quite good his re-guarding is very good especially for a big guy back into like 50-50 and bear trap and so I didn't want to expel too much energy at the start of the match and then not have enough for the tail end knowing that it could very well go the 15 minutes um, Gordon actually sent me a big paragraph uh, the night before the match saying that he realized that his scramble basically doesn't exist and he can't keep people pinned down. He goes, if your ass hits the floor, you are under no permission to stay down. Because he goes, you can get up. He's not going to put you in front headlock. He's not going to submit you. He's not going to take you back. You will be able to get up. And so that was what I went into the match with the intention with. Um, grateful that he gave me, gave me some tips because it, it definitely, if you rewatch the match, you can definitely see some instances where I was probably more willing to stay down had I not got that message rather than when I did get the message, I got up immediately and then just started putting the pressure back onto him. Um, hit him with the, the same side Uchimata that I hit him with two years ago, which is good. This one was nicer. This one was much nicer. Um, the other one was kind of like, I'm big, I'm going to kick your hip with my leg. Yeah. This one was, oh, Uchi, get his hips connected. Uh, sorry, get his hips disconnected and then throw him through the sky. And... Um, the still shots that you got with my forehead and my heel like couldn't be further apart. They're <laughs> sick. Um, so yeah, hit him with a nice Uchi. The mistake that pisses me off the most about the match is that I let him turtle for three seconds and didn't really do anything to attack his turtle. I was cognizant of not falling off and going into bottom position then having to expel a ton of energy after a big takedown like that because your adrenaline goes up when you do something like that. And so... <clears throat> The lesson from that match is don't wait, just continue. If you fall off, you can get back up. You might get tired. You're meant to be tired. Get over it. And then so watching it back, that was the only thing that I made the mistake because I didn't really make many mistakes. Um, could have been more active on the feet, picking up singles to negate the stalling call, obviously, uh, but that's a judge's determination. So they just didn't think I was doing enough, but that's something I'm going to implement post-match post, post -match as well. Um, and the match with Dan, I was completely fucked after the Felipe match. Um, the rush of emotions, the, the surge of energy, all that sort of stuff. And the, the, the cooling down isn't the hard part. It's the re-warming up and the re-energizing up after the cool down that's the difficult part. And so the big lesson that I learned from the entirety of the, the, the format of the tournament is that you have to manage your energy very, very well, not only within the match, but in, then also outside the match. And you've got to make clear and very distinct separations between what you're doing at the time. So when you're in a match, it's, it's all about that. You're not worrying about match one, uh, two, three, and four. You're only worried about match one. When you finish your match, when you win, you're only worried about number two, not three and four. Day two doesn't exist until you get there. And so what I was, what I was sort of anticipating through the Philippe match was that I'd do really well and then go on to the finals and have that big surge of energy because you're in your first ADCC finals and all that sort of stuff. And then that just didn't eventuate. And so I didn't recalibrate after that, didn't recenter myself, and then went out to that match not entirely focused. We had a game plan, I just didn't execute it, and obviously got fucking footlocked. So it is what it is. It's a beautiful lesson. Staying, staying focused on the task at hand while it's in front of you and not thinking about like what ifs or not, not thinking about what could be's or any, anything of that variety um, and really staying involved. And you, you see... You see heaps of elements of that. There's actually a, an interview with Philippe said kind of the same thing. He was going to pull out of the final because of all the fucking shit matches that he had. They're just wars. I don't think, I think he submitted Brandon Reed right at the very end of his match. I don't remember who he had match two with. 
match three was obviously the war with me. And then in between that, I had a fucking super fight with Gordon. Um, so a year ago, after Leandro died and he had the match with Gordon, you could have called him a quitter. Um, I don't think you can say that anymore because of the resilience that he showed. It's, it's, it's impressive. Like, I don't have much to do with the guy. I don't know him in any personal, personal capacity. Um, but it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive to, to have a back injury. Um, I don't know how severe it was or anything like that. Everyone talks about the injuries. They all have injuries. But um, to just continue to push forwards and then go on to win and beat Luke, who's a fucking stud. Um, very impressive. So it was a good weekend. It's a good thing to be a part of. It was a fucking spectacle. Um, obviously a very special event to be a part of. Um, looking forward to the next one. I get invited to 2026, which is great. I, I ended up doing trials anyway, just for the fuck of it. Just to piss everybody off. All good things. Heaps of lessons. Heaps of shit to work on. Heaps of shit to work on from training with, with New Wave and the guys beforehand. And then um, some implementation stuff on the back end from all that, which is great. Learned heaps, 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 heaps from being in that room. Just some things um, ADCC specific that I haven't been doing, which is great. It's good another two years to work on. And actually, the, the biggest change in mindset for me personally, um, post-2022 is I was so fresh and so new and, and the next ADCC was so far away that I kind of just let it go off into the distance until we were ramping up for trials and then obviously win trials and then I won the first trials in November so it was still almost a year away so I had a very drawn out focus period um, but it wasn't always hyper fixated on ADCC 2024 being an event and then listening to Giancarlo after 22 he was like well now I've got two years to work to, to, to double gold or to, to double champ or whatever you want to call it. And so that's my mindset coming into the end of 24, the entirety of 25, and then the, the three quarters of 26 is that I'm going to periodize a lot of training and just be solely pointed focused on 26 and golding at 26 because um, everything else doesn't really matter that I care about. So I'm right there, which is great. I thought about this yesterday. There's so many f***s on Reddit. They're like, he's going to get pumped. He's going to lose the first round. Suck me off. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Like, seriously, I, I, I really do not understand what you get out of that. Like, what, what sort of tiny dopaminergic validation do you think that you get from that? Where someone's, someone's living the dreams that you decided to give up on. Do you think they care? <laughs> really? In all honesty, it's a bit ridiculous. Um, but people are going to be people. They're going to troll or whatever they uh, say it. Don't spray it. They're going to troll or, or whatever they uh, deem necessary. Um, but yeah, here we are. I'm actually doing the thing. So if it makes you mad, maybe do something else with yourself. You won't be as mad. <laughs>